Western civilization. How much do you know? My name is Russell Miles and this is the 21st episode of our Western Civilization series. In the previous episode we looked at tuberculosis. In this episode we're going to explore acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. This is not just about the impact of a disease on Western civilization, but an expose of Western culture itself. It is an extremely complex story involving much scientific detail, which I can buy that I cannot adequately convey, but I will endeavour to show the social and cultural dynamics of this fascinating time. You know, that's the thing, you know, I have a, a reputation for being sort of controversial and irreverent and also the semantic bear trap of bad taste. And actually I do have, and I will always be accused of bad taste by the people who eat in restaurants to reserve service, you know, that kind of scene to anyone, yeah. But you might be interested in how I became offensive. Lenny Bruce was an American stand-up comedian, screenwriter, social critic, satirist. He joined the US Navy at 16 during the Second World War, and after three years of service in the European theatre, discharged relating to dressing in drag, which was later changed to honourable on appeal. He performed mostly in comedy theatres, including in London and Australia. He was essentially blacklisted from television. He died in 1966 due to a drug overdose, aged 40. In 2003, New York Governor George Pataki granted Lenny Bruce a posthumous pardon for an obscenity conviction. There's semantics. There are words that offend me. Let's see, Governor Farbus, segregation offend me. Uh, nighttime television offends me. Some nighttime television. <laughs> uh, the shows that exploit homosexuality, narcotics, and prostitution under the guise of helping the societal problems. In, the, like In our previous episode, we described viruses as tiny microbes which can't grow or reproduce apart from a living cell or host, such as a plant, animal, or people. The great majority of viruses live in harmony with their hosts, some conferring benefits, most appearing to do nothing at all, and a few can be harmful. Microbes can cause disease when they evolve, or a new pathogen enters a host. These changes can be caused by things like climate change, farming or transport, by ships which allow a microbe access to a new host, interaction with animals that allows a microbe to jump from an animal to a human, Crowding with urbanisation or movement of people, refugees, wars. In March 1980, Dr. Michael Gottlieb in Los Angeles was asked for an opinion about an unusual case. The patient was a man in his 30s with severe respiratory complaint, pale, very thin, with a mouthful of white fungal infections. The infection turned out to be Pneumociscus carinina pneumonia. This was very rare in an otherwise healthy man. Normally the body's immune system keeps the organism in check, except for frail newborns, cancer sufferers and the elderly. Within a few weeks the man was hospitalised and a couple of months he was dead. Dr. Godlev was to note further patients with similarly depleted immune systems who did not respond to treatment. A common denominator was that all homosexuals had had multiple partners and used a manual nitrate, a muscle relaxant. As promiscuous homosexuality was an identified link suggesting a sexually transmitted infection, a report was made to the US Center for Disease Control and Prevention. By July 1981, the Center for Disease Control had recorded 26 other such cases in California and New York, all with rare skin cancers, middle age, eight had died. By August 1981, the Centre for Disease Control had listed 107 cases, of which most were homosexual males, but six were heterosexual men and one woman. There were 270 cases by December, most of whom eventually died of the conditions made worse by depleted immune systems, usually within 20 months of diagnosis. While well, it was known that immunodeficiency was killing people, but what microbe or virus might be causing this, and what was its mode of transmission? Initially referred to as gay-related immune deficiency, GRID, 
the CDC adopted the term AIDS, Acquired Immunodeficiency Disease, in September of 1982. Researchers interviewed those afflicted about their sexual behaviour to gain insight into the condition. The number of sexual partners appeared to correlate with the chances of infection, with exposure to other sexually transmitted infections causing a cumulative depletion of immunity. Whereas amino nitrate use and fisting, inserting hand into rectum or vagina for sexual stimulation, had no apparent correlation. Other research compared where reported cases lived with census data. Married, never married. A crude approximation of homosexual population in a given location. This showed a much greater incidence of infection in gay locations. The inference being the disease was following an epidemic pattern, with the incidence more than doubling each year and would soon spread wider. By December 1982, the CDC advised that there were 788 confirmed AIDS cases. 42 or 5% belonged to no known risk group, including haemophiliacs with possible transmission from blood products. By March 1983, there were 1,200 cases, most in the USA, but a few in Europe and in Haiti. Promiscuous homosexual behaviour was recognised as a significant factor regarding AIDS. Public health authorities sought to educate about safer sex and condom use. Gay men also altered lifestyles. Bathhouses in the east coast of the United States reported a decline in revenue. However, authorities were reluctant to close down bathhouses and other gay venues. This was only a decade since the Stonewall riots in New York City about police aggression towards gay men, so authorities wanted to avoid seeming to harass people. The 1983 Gay Freedom Day in New York and San Francisco, the anniversary of the Stonewall riots, saw health warnings, pamphlets, bowls of condoms, those with AIDS pushed in wheelchairs, and television and mainstream media coverage of the event. The publicity saw backlash. The Reverend Billy Graham, a highly popular evangelical preacher who had actively supported black civil rights, said, AIDS is a judgment from God. Jerry Forwell, the leader of the Moral Majority political movement, said, Scripture is clear, we do not reap in flesh when we violate God's law. Equally, the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America had long participated in gay freedom parades, and later there were various Baptist, Lutheran and Quaker churches, along with Buddhist, Mormon and Jewish faith communities. Researchers were presenting various theories about AIDS based on observation and correlation. These included that syphilis was a factor, fisting, steroid skin creams, it was similar to a protein element found in sheep scabies, African swine fever, there had been an outbreak in Cuba and Haiti in 1978, undercooked pork brought to the US from Haiti by gay tourists, Cultural stigma meant Haitian men would not acknowledge homosexual behaviour and dismissed as not a disease at all, but a gay pogrom. One issue was that in New York, cases were predominantly IV drug users, but in the west coast of the USA, it was gay men. There was limited research about IV drug use due to the criminalisation of drug use and a just-say-no approach. A political issue was that publicity without funding would create a backlash or that politicians would be unsympathetic to a disease associated with gay men. This saw scientists engaging in what was referred to as guerrilla research, seeking to keep their work from being noticed. There was also competition within scientists, where research about Ebola, malaria and other diseases having more attention. In October 1984, bathhouses and private sex clubs in San Francisco were closed to reduce high-risk sexual activity. New York and Los Angeles followed suit within a year. In 1983, French researchers from the Pasteur Institute determined that a novel retrovirus may be infecting AIDS patients. A retrovirus inserts a copy of its genome into the DNA of a host cell, changing the cell. A wide number of scientists from around the world have been collaborating about AIDS. There was some controversy between an American virologist group led by Dr. Robert Gallio and the Pasteur group over who discovered HIV. 
and it later emerged that the sample the virus sent from the Pasteur Institute had become contaminated with a sample used by the Galileo group. Regardless, the PASTO group had isolated HIV and the Galio group had demonstrated that HIV causes AIDS. On the 23rd of April 1984, US Health and Human Services Secretary Margaret Hetler announced at a joint media conference with the Pasteur Institute that the virus that caused AIDS had been found. The virus was named Human Immunodeficiency Virus, HIV. This led to anticipation of a vaccine within a few years. By the end of the year, the number of AIDS cases in the USA had risen to 3,064. Of this number, 1,292 had died. Human immunodeficiency viruses are a species of lentiviruses which affect many species, characteristically responsible for long-duration illnesses with a long incubation period. Over time, HIV causes acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, AIDS. With regard to AIDS, the incubation period is typically 8 to 24 months before symptoms appear, but can be much shorter, with a few reports of over a decade. By 1985, the first HIV tests became available. A major issue with earlier tests for HIV antibodies is that they had a long window period, up to 12 weeks, where a person may be infectious but still receive a negative result. This meant that persons had to restrain from any high-risk behaviour, e.g. sexual intercourse, for 12 weeks after a test for it to be valid. The window period was reduced with improved testing and is now about two weeks. In 1983, three men who had received doses of blood coagulation products and living far apart were identified as infected with AIDS. Five more, including a child, all haemophiliacs, were identified. Then a baby who had multiple transfusions at birth. Then more babies whose mothers were infected with AIDS or in a high risk group for AIDS. At this stage, calculations were made that the chance of any one blood recipient receiving blood from an infected person was 1 in 12 million for hepatitis B. Haemophiliacs not only received frequent transfusions, but the blood product was made from plasma. While in the US whole blood was derived almost exclusively from volunteers who were limited in how many donations they could make, plasma was often purchased from those who tended to be on low income, in deprived circumstances and lower general health. They also donated more frequently, sometimes twice a week. Moreover, the clotting agent was made from plasma derived from many donations. The odds of a haemophilia, who were mostly young boys, being infected by AIDS was almost inevitable. Widespread use of blood clotting agents to treat haemophilia in the USA had not started till the mid-1970s. It was considered a miracle at the time and extended the life of those afflicted by up to a decade. At this time, most of the global blood supply services did not test for or sterilise blood products. Retrospective tests later showed that one batch of blood in the USA was contaminated with AIDS in 1978. In 1983, US government agencies advised that donors be educated about who should refrain from donating. By 1998, there was a ban on blood donations for men who had had sex with men. Most Western countries adopted similar policies, some included lesbians, whom never posed a higher risk. From early 2000, most countries moved to a deferral period, often of around 12 months. In Europe, AIDS cases were initially being traced to gay men from the USA, but in 1982-83, five caesareans living in Belgium had been diagnosed with profound immunodeficiency. None were homosexuals, had travelled to the USA or Haiti, and were not IV drug users, with two being women. Around one-fifth of European cases were people originally from sub-Sahara Africa. Our next podcast will continue the story of AIDS, its origins, the false leads and the emergence of a global response. In the meanwhile, the origins of AIDS are A. Hunters being affected by wounds from chimpanzees in Western Africa. B. A mutation of malaria virus, possibly in Haiti. C. Of unknown origins emerging in the Kindasa area of the then Belgium Congo. D. A sexually transmitted disease linked to tuberculosis. 
The answer will be in our next podcast. If you like this channel, please subscribe and tick like. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And I can be contacted at email russmills at ipromise.com.au. Thanks for listening.